Greetings and salutations everybody. My name is Andrew Kirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the highly anticipated fantasy football top 10 tight end rankings for the 2018 fantasy season. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. But before I do, I want to thank everybody for supporting me, watching my content, liking, commenting, and asking questions. That's amazing. I love it. Continue to do so. Be curious. Ask questions. Because, you know, not only are you guys learning from me, sometimes I'm learning from you. So having that two-way conversation, I extremely appreciate it. And uh, let's just continue to, to keep going and let's have fun with this, shall we? Everybody, how's it going? Okay, so as you can see on the screen, right, the top of our rankings, we got Rob Gronkowski. It's not going to be much of a surprise. Like I said in my prior video uh, with the top wide receiver rankings, the number ones are usually going to stay consistent. With, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, and here you go, Rob Gronkowski, right? So why is Rob Gronkowski, you know, noted as the number one tight end in fantasy? Well, he's when he's healthy, okay, when Rob Gronkowski is healthy, he's at, and he's at the, his top of his game, he's the best tight end in football, right? Not to mention that Tom Brady is throwing him the football, because that combo in itself is deadly, right? You have Rob Gronkowski, who's a giant athlete who can get downfield just as fast as the safeties. And then you got Tom Brady, you know, throwing into tight pockets where Gro uh, Gro <laughs> Gronkowski can grab the ball and just be fantasy productive. And, you know, that combination has been working for the last, what, six years now? And it's just been extremely successful, right? So Gronkowski last season um, in – fantasy perspective in half point PPR leagues he was the number one tight end in full point PPR if I'm not mistaken I think Travis Kelsey had beat him by just a tad bit but we're gonna talk about half point PPR just so we're in the middle of like the standard players and the full point PPR players just so everyone kind of gets an understanding or a scale of how we're gonna go ahead and talk about these guys right so going into the 2018 season um there's a lot of thoughts that I had on Rob Gronkowski right um, when I was thinking about, you know, why is he number one? Well, prior to, you know, training camp, Rob Gronkowski was contemplating retirement this past offseason, which was kind of a, um, a surprise to many, I think. Yes, he's fought with, you know, many back surgeries, um, you know, surgeries that have kept him out for seasons and seasons, right? I think he's he's only played full seasons, like a full 16-game seasons a couple times throughout his entire career, which isn't great, right? Um, but when he stays healthy, Gronk is an absolute animal. But the only issue I had was when you start to contemplate retirement, I think that's when your production, your, um, your mentality, just for football at least, it starts to disappear and your production might dip, right? When you start thinking, do I really want to play? I think that's when it begins to get to the point where you might actually might want to stop playing because if you're not full into it and you're not committed you know football is too dangerous of a sport to go half speed in or um to kind of think that you want to play anyway still i think rob gronkowski is going to come out i think he's going to ball out this season i think he's going to be the number one tight end in football and um just to support it i just want to show a graphic um if you haven't seen this graphic before then you haven't seen my Superflex video um no problem that's why this is here um, this was last season, 2017. I compared the statistics and half point PPR scoring leagues from Rob Gronkowski to Julio Jones. Okay, last season, Rob Gronkowski had 1,084 receiving yards, 69 receptions, eight touchdowns, and 192.9 fantasy points throughout the entire season, right? On the other hand, Julio Jones, who was the, uh, you know, Julio Jones, um, I think yesterday in my video, I had him at my number fourth ranked wide receiver going into this season. Um, he had 207.9 fantasy points last season with 1,444 receiving yards on 88 receptions and three touchdowns, right? So last season, um, you know, as I said before, Rob Gronkowski was the number one ranked tight end and Julio Jones last year was the number fourth ranked wide receiver, okay? In half point PPR scoring formats. And on a per week average, the difference between these two players was 0.9375 fantasy points per week. So what is the point I'm trying to make? I'm trying to tell you that if, if, I don't think, I think Julio's going to improve. I think his touchdown numbers are going to go up, okay? But how much more can they go up? Let's say they go up uh, three touchdowns, okay? That's 18 points on top of the 207, right? At very best, 
right? Rob Gronkowski is a top 10 wide receiver, right? So when you're thinking about top 10 wide receivers, when it starts to get to the um, 8, 9, 10 range, I would consider maybe taking Rob Gronkowski there, right? Uh, yesterday in my video, I had, I think 8 was AJ Green, 9 was Mike Evans, um, and 10 was T.Y. Hilton. I would consider taking Rob Gronkowski over these guys if you're confident that Rob's going to stay healthy and he's going to produce. Because this coming season, with the absence of Edelman, um, the Patriots are cutting receivers left, right, and center um, with Jordan Matthews gone and Kenny Britt gone. I think Gronkowski is going to have to step up this year in order to help out Tom Brady as much as he can. That reception number is going to go up. The touchdowns, if it stays the same, that's fantastic. All I'm saying is, if you're looking at your draft boards, right, I would consider taking Gronk as soon as maybe Devontae Adams and Michael Thomas are off the board, Gronk would be my next best up, okay? So that's the point of this entire graphic, all right? Anyway, so, oh, my neck. All right, so let's get into the number two ranked tight end, right? We got Zach Ertz, all right? Zach Ertz, um, in my opinion, he's the number two ti uh, ranked tight end for me because of many factors, right? You might be thinking, um, where's Travis Kelsey? Why isn't Kelsey your number two ranked tight end? Well, just listen out. Just, just, just hear me out, okay? Not listen out, hello? Um... Uh, <laughs> Just, just hear me out, okay? So, with the, I don't know, the complications of the the Eagles' offense this this you know off season, Carson Wentz, we haven't seen him play in the preseason. We saw Nick Foles play yesterday in the preseason, and my God, he was awful. Um, he was getting ripped up by that Cleveland defense. And Alshon Jeffrey, his MIA might be on the pup list, the physically unable to perform list. He might be out for the first six weeks of the season. So. The way I see it, no matter what, I think Zach Ertz is going to be the number one option on this offense, right? They're going to run the ball. J.J. is going to get his fair share. But I think before Nelson Aguilar touches the ball, it's going to be Zach Ertz, right? Whether it's Foles or Wentz under center, I think that Zach Ertz is the number one option receiving on this team, right? Especially if Alshon Jeffrey's a question mark going into this season, I, I would 100% guarantee that Zach Ertz is going to have a boost in production, okay? So now you might be thinking, well, Zach Ertz couldn't stay healthy last season. Um, maybe that's why he wasn't the number two. Yeah, I think that's what it was. You know, having missed um, almost, well, okay, so it said he played 14 games last year, but let's be real, okay? One of those games, um, he didn't play because they had already clinched the number one seed. They didn't have to play, right? And then the other game... Um, Injury, and then there was a game where midway through the um, the game that he had gotten injured, and they just held him out for the second half, right? So he basically missed like one and a half games, right? Even though it's it's really two and a half games, but all things considered, you don't expect people to start in that seventeenth week. Um, so let's just I'm gonna read some stats from the playoffs, right? This past uh, uh, playoffs from the 2018, yeah, it was 2018 Super Bowl. Okay, so. Zach Ertz against the Minnesota Vikings, right? He was 8 for 8. 8 targets, 8 receptions, 93 yards. That's a clean week, right? Against a Vikings defense that later on uh, today when I record my defense video, you're going to hear about the Vikings, right? So he tore up the Vikings. 8 receptions, 8 targets, 93 yards with Nick Foles under center, okay? Versus the Patriots in the Super Bowl. 9 receptions on... Uh, sorry. 7 receptions on 9 targets. Excuse me. 67 yards and a touchdown. Okay? So we know that with Foles, he can be productive. We know for a fact that he's going to be productive with Carson Wentz. If Alshon's not there, Zach Ertz, you're coming home with me. I'm going to take you home. You're going to be on my team. And we're just going to laugh all the way straight to the bank when we cash in the money at the end of the season. I'm telling you. Anyway, um, let's move on to the number three tight end. Travis Kelsey, right? Everyone was thinking, where's Travis? Well, here's the problem with Travis Kelsey. I, don't, I wouldn't consider it a problem. It's more of an inherent risk that um, Patrick Mahomes is not going to be of the level that um, Alex Smith was last season, right? They drafted Patrick Mahomes in 2017 in the first round. They traded up to grab him because they knew that his talent couldn't be passed on, right? They wanted this kid. They knew that he was going to be the quarterback of the future, right? But what is he going to do for this Kansas City Chiefs team? In his first year as a starter, starting all you know, 16 games, can he produce the same numbers statistically that Alex Smith did in order to help the pieces that surround him? Is he going to be able to, you know, help out Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey as much as Alex Smith did last year? Um, 
Will that passing game open up opportunities for Kareem Hunt? That's the huge question mark coming into this season, I think. Um, besides the fact that um, you know Patrick Mahomes is inexperienced, I don't know if Travis Kelsey is going to be targeted as much considering the addition of Sammy Watkins to the Chiefs lineup, right? So the Chiefs prior to, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think. When was the last time the Chiefs actually had a good number two t- uh, wide receiver? A good number two wide receiver. I, I, I honestly, when I think of Chiefs wide receivers, right? Like as of late, Tyree Kill, right? And then before that, they had Jeremy Macklin um, that Andy Reid had brought over. And then before that, they had Dwayne Bowe, right? I don't remember a single good number two wide receiver for this team. They brought in Sammy Watkins. Why? Because they want to throw the ball a little bit. Will Sammy Watkins' production take a little bit away from Travis Kelsey? I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. I think that um, Travis Kelsey, you know, he had 122 targets last season. I don't know if he's going to be able to get that many this year. If he does, then great. He's perfectly at the number three spot where I think he's going to land next season. Um... A thing to consider also, last season in half-point PPR scoring, he was only 0.9 points difference from Rob Gronkowski. In full-point PPR, he was uh, he scored more points than Rob Gronkowski um, because he had more receptions. Uh, plain and simple, I think he's he's of the talent. The, the, just the only question as of right now is, can Patrick Mahomes deliver the ball and help Travis Kelsey be the fantasy stud that we know he's going to be? Right, that's the real big question. That's why I've got him at three rather than the number two spot. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's go with the next tight end, Jimmy Graham Crackers, baby. Okay, so Jimmy Graham, right? No longer a member of the Seahawks. He is now on the Green Bay Packers. Okay, you know I've been saying this for the last couple weeks. Oh man, Jimmy Graham's gonna be good on the Packers. You know, um, it's pretty hard to replace a Jordy Nelson. You know, talented wide receiver. But I think getting Jimmy Graham is going to help, right? In the red zone, Jimmy Graham is going to be an absolute threat. Um, You know, Aaron Rodgers is going to come down. He's going to score 35-plus touchdowns this season easily, right? So, I mean, this is just passing touchdowns. He might run a couple in here and there. You know, he's got legs. Uh, He doesn't like to use his legs too much unless he really has to. Um, The way I see it, I think, you know, Devontae Adams is going to get his with a good, consistent 10 touchdowns. I think Jimmy Graham is going to get 10 touchdowns this season. I don't see him having a boatload of yards, though. That's the only issue, right? Jimmy Graham, uh, within this kind of a Packers offense, yes, they can put him in at the slot position. They can have him just about nearly anywhere because of how talented and athletic this man is. But I don't think he's going to be a 1,000-yard receiver to any extent. Uh, I think he's going to have just about uh, 70 receptions, 700 yards, um, 10 touchdowns, right? That's why I've got him at my number four spot because with the likes of Aaron Rodgers under center, Jimmy Graham's value just goes up. I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous how Jimmy Graham seems to find himself. Uh, I think he does it on purpose, playing with the best quarterbacks, right? Obviously drafted to the Saints. He had no choice in that matter, but he ended up with Drew Brees, right? Then he was traded off to the Seahawks. But he somehow found himself with Russell Wilson, another great quarterback. Now that the offseason hit, he's a part of the Packers. He's sitting around with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, what's next? Is he going to be a Patriot next year? Like, what's what's going on? You know, is he going to play with, with Tom Brady? You never know. But he keeps managing to find himself with good quarterbacks, which help his fantasy value 100%. Um, and I like Jimmy Graham this year. That's why I have him on my number four. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about our number five pick, baby. <laughs> Kyle Rudolph. Okay, guys, here it is. You know, my number fives, they're pretty much my bold predictions, I would say, my number fives. But it's it's not like coincidence. They just happen to always be there, right? Because top five is just a, it's a, it's a tier in its own, I think. Um, if you haven't seen my exclusive why you should draft Kyle Rudolph um, video this season, um, video, then I'm just going to give you the the summation of what I, I go over in that video, okay? Um, it's a 17-minute video. I'm going to wrap it up in about three minutes, okay? So um, basically, what I talk about in that 20-minute video, 17-minute video, it's um, it consists around why Kyle Rudolph is getting a production boost this coming season, right? And I pinpointed it to the fact that Kirk Cousins 
throughout his entire career has loved using the tight end position um, in the offense, especially when he was you know 100% with the Redskins, right? When he played with the Redskins, he had the likes of Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis um, and a couple of other no-name guys that I mentioned in that video, but we're not, I don't remember, honestly. Um, but what did I, what did I talk about Kyle Rudolph? Okay, so I broke down the statistics with Kirk Cousins throwing the ball to the tight end position within the Redskins offense um, in the three seasons that he was the starting quarterback for the Redskins. It was 2015, 2016, and 2017, okay? So in those three seasons, he averaged uh, throwing the ball to the tight end position uh, he threw the ball to the tight end position 24.5% of the time, okay? Which is a pretty good lump sum, right? He threw, a, on average, 138 balls towards tight end, so 138 targets. Um, tight ends on these teams on a per-year basis had 101 receptions, 1,122 receiving yards, and 8 touchdowns per year, okay? Now, I had this, I, I repeated it again in my, my original video, okay? Tight ends playing with Kirk Cousins averaged 138 targets, 101 receptions, 1,122 receiving yards, and eight touchdowns per season. With the size and the talent that Kyle Rudolph has, right? He's an eight touchdown kind of guy a year. He is. He truly is. When he played with Sam Bradford in 2016, he was that 132 target, 100 reception guy that was the number two ranked uh, tight end in fantasy, right? With Kirk Cousins under center, I think Kyle Rudolph's production is going up. You know, we haven't seen much during preseason, but everyone's running a vanilla offense and a vanilla defense. No one really wants to go ahead and show what they really are scheming up, okay? That's why people like the Bears are not starting any starters in week three preseason, and I won't be talking about that game. Anyway, that's the whole point. I have Kyle Rudolph at number five. I think he's going to have a great season this year. Let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about number six, Greg Olson. All right, another one of these guys that earlier on in the year I had him a little bit higher ranked. Um, last couple weeks, I've go ahead. I, you know, I've come to my conclusion that I'm going to go ahead and bring him down to number six because of the fact that um, you know being a part of this Carolina offense, it's going to be difficult to find you know some receptions, right? Yet, Greg Olson is the best friend of um, Cam Newton. Okay, excuse me. Greg Olson's been the best friend of Cam Newton for a while, right? In uh, 2014 to 2016, okay? Greg Olson averaged 80 receptions, 1,050 receiving yards, and five touchdowns a season, right? That made him a top five tight end every season. Now, why do I have him outside of the top five? Well, you know, the tight end possession, uh, as of right now, it's it's pretty inflated, you know? Throughout the, the first couple weeks of me making videos on this channel... I, I said consistently, do you have to fight top five tight end? You know, you don't want to have to worry about guys um, getting production. You don't want to hope that they barely score six points. You want guys that are going to come out on a weekly basis and they're going to put up 12 fantasy points for you. Um, and that was a guy like Greg Olson. This year, there is a lot of good tight ends. I'm telling you, you can wait on tight end. I I mean, it's crazy. But I, I like Greg Olson this year. I think because, you know, Funches, DJ Moore... Curtis Samuel, McCaffrey, and you know Cam going and getting his own. Greg Olson is going to get a little bit of a production dip this year, um, but I think he's going to be consistent enough to be the top six tight end. Uh, I like him there, uh, and I like Greg Olson to be honest. Don't sleep on him, guys. Don't sleep on him. Um, I, there's a reason why I have him ahead of Evan Ingram, right? So Evan Ingram, last season rookie out of Ole Miss, had a fantastic year, right? He was probably one of the best rookie tight ends um, that had a great fantasy performance within their first year um, in a while, right? Like, I, I don't remember the last time that a tight end came out and just took apart the league, but Evan Ingram did. But there's a caveat to that, okay? Evan Ingram, yes, he came out and he was extremely productive last season, but Odell Beckham was hurt. Sterling Shepard was hurt. The backfield was a mess. And the organization was a mess, right? The New York Giants weren't really a team, you know. Uh, from what I remember, Eli Manning got benched uh, and started crying in the locker room. It was just a mess. 
It, ben McAdoo is one of the worst head coaches I've ever seen in my life. They started 0-4. They were looking like a mess, right? Yet, he was the number five tight end in half-point PPR scoring formats, right? Evan Ingram was amazing. Um, but is he going to be able to produce, reproduce that kind of a season? Um, with the return of Odell Beckham, Sterling Shepard within this offense, um, they've selected Saquon Barkley second overall, uh, <laughs> overall, hello? overall in the 2018 draft. I think Evan Ingram will take a step back a little bit. He's not going to be a top five tight end, but he is still going to be a tight end that you want on your team. That's why I've got him at the number seven slot. I think he's extremely athletic. He's a young kid. Um, he got a concussion yesterday, which isn't good, but I didn't adjust it because, you know, there's a couple weeks until thing concussion protocol. I'll go through it. If something crazy comes up, then I would probably say st- um, stay updated with that. But otherwise, I like it. I like Evan Ingram. Let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about our number eight selection. That's Trey Burton. Okay, so another one of these things, right? If you didn't watch my preseason number two, I, I always refer back to things that I've said, right? But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share them with you, right? Because maybe this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, right? That's fine. That's why I'm going to share it with you. I shared the, the golden nuggets from the Kyle Rudolph video, and now I'm going to talk about Trey Burton the same way, right? So why is Trey Burton number eight, right? A guy that wasn't even close to being a number one tight end last season has somehow managed to find his way within the top eight rankings. There's got to be something wrong, Andrew. No, you know, I don't think so. You know, Trey Burton was a backup for the Philadelphia Eagles last year while, um, uh, excuse me, Zach Ertz was injured for a couple games. Trey Burton came in and he was a stud, right? There was a game he had two receiving touchdowns. He looked good, right? In the playoffs, he played pretty decently. So what happened was the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs last year, Matt Nagy, was hired as the head coach for the Chicago Bears. Um, You know, he thought, okay, I understand what we need to do. We need to surround our young quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, with weapons, okay? They went and picked up Allen Robinson. They brought in Taylor Gabriel. They drafted Anthony Miller. And then they went and they also brought in Trey Burton. Now, I don't think Trey Burton is the Travis Kelsey type. I don't see him having 100 receptions, you know. I don't see him going ape shit and completely tearing everybody up. But with Matt Nagy, right, the tight end position is extremely valuable. Because, honestly, if you just look at what he's done with Travis Kelsey, the amount of times that they use the tight end within that Chiefs offense, I think they're going to bring that into the Bears organization. They're going to help out Mitch Trubisky by giving him a big target like Burton. And Burton is going to be a good tight end this coming season. He's a bigger target. He's good in the red zone. They've been working him in the slot in this preseason. He's been on the field majority with the first team offense. Adam Shaheen, who is a tight end um, on this team, was hurt earlier this preseason, um, which opens more doors for Trey, uh, Trey Burton to completely take over this entire tight end landscape of the Bears team and I think he's going to do it I think he's going to do a hell of a job too so that's why I like Trey Burton okay let's go ahead and move on because we can't be here all day you know I got two more videos to make I got to make a kickers video and I got to make a defense video and I can't wait to make those honestly I'm at I'm maybe more excited about those um give me a sec oh my neck is really just whoo anyway so we're gonna be talking about Delaney Walker right Delaney Walker so when I was, I was making this uh, this graphic behind me, right? I was thinking, wow, you know, Delaney Walker's been in the league for a while. How long has he been in the league? I went and looked. He's this is going to be his thirteenth season in the NFL. His thirteenth season. You got to be kidding me, man. Him and Ben Watson, they just don't go away, right? But Delaney Walker, you you, you wouldn't even remember that he was he's been in the league for that long, right? A lot of people don't remember. He used to be a. Uh, uh, a two-headed monster with Vernon Davis back in the 49ers days. That was a, a deadly combo. Um, so anyway, Walker, he's looking good this season. The Tennessee Titans have changed their offensive coordinator. Um, they were they were pretty lackadaisical last season. You know, I thought that DeMarco Murray's injuries pretty much summed up the entire season. You know, DeMarco Murray struggled. Therefore, it started to seep into the play action which started the struggle with Mariota. And as soon as Mariota starts to struggle, it all went downhill. If I'm not mistaken, Mariota had more interceptions than he had touchdown passes last year, which is you know very unlike himself. The, the two years prior um, in the league, Mariota was extremely efficient. 
and he was productive, right, fantasy-wise, because he was abil- his ability to move out of the pocket and run for extra points, it was extremely helpful. This coming season, I have Delaney Walker at my number nine because I think, yes, he's going to be an extremely good tight end this season. Uh, he's going to be a tight end one, 100%. You know, last season in half-point PPR scoring formats, he was the number six tight end. Um, but I think with the new offensive coordinator, he might get a little bit of a production dip because they're going to have that two-headed monster with Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis. Corey Davis is going to get into his own. He's not going to be injured anymore. He's going to come out, and hopefully Mario is going to throw a couple good balls. Um, they have guys like Tywan Taylor, uh, or Tawan Taylor, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Tyrod Tyrod. It's all the same. Um, it's really not. I got to figure that out. Anyway, um, they have Rashard Matthews coming back from injury. I think that this team is extremely talented. I think Delaney Walker is going to be a top 10 tight end. And, you know, he'll probably end up producing somewhere around like 70, 65 to 70 receptions, probably like upper 700 maybe 800 yards again and about four to five touchdowns this season i like him there um i like him in ppr scoring leagues because it gives him a little bit of extra value considering he's not a tight end that is extremely touchdown dependent like a jimmy graham or per se a uh, little bit of a trey burton um that's why i have him at nine i like him this season he's gonna be good right just as long as Mariota, you know figures it out i think he'll be great okay so our last tight end uh, here we go, drum roll. Our last tight end. We have ourselves David Njoku. Hey, let's let me try this real quick. All right. Here we go, here we go. Can we do this? Right. Oh. I'm gonna hold you up, David. There you go. Look at me. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Was that worth it? I don't know. But it looked good. Anyway, David Njoku. Of the Cleveland Browns, second-year tight end out of the University of Miami, the U. Um, David Njoku, right? A lot of people probably don't have him in their top ten. Probably people have like guys like Jordan Reed or have Tyler Eiferts or have safer tight end options than David Njoku. But I really believe that David Njoku is a safe option this year, right? Um, you might be thinking, Andrew, you've been watching too much hard knocks. You've been watching too much preseason football. It's nothing like that. To be honest, it doesn't really matter, you know. If Terod Taylor is going to be the starting quarterback of this team, then David Njoku is going to get a plus in production because majority of last season, you know, with Deshaun Kaiser under center, that was a mess, right? The Cleveland Browns 0-16 last year, no one was going to be fantasy relevant there. Duke Johnson barely found his way uh, into relevancy and and he was great right but I think David Njoku with a good quarterback under center this team is well improved right they have wide receivers left right and center. you know they got Jarvis Landry They're, they've got the return of Josh Gordon coming in they have uh, Rashad Higgins they might sign Des Bryant we'll see their backfield is full of talent Hyde Chubb and um, Duke Johnson as I mentioned before the defense is well improved I think this team might you know, I'm not going to say make a run, but they're going to be fantasy relevant. Do not sleep on a team like the Browns. I like David Njoku this year. I love him at the 10th slot. If you don't want to take a tight end early and you want to wait, David Njoku is a great option for you, whether it's Tyrod Taylor or whether it's Baker Mayfield to Rod Taylor. I don't know. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you want, we're going to go ahead I'll review it again. We had Gronkowski at one, Zach Ertz at two, Travis Kelsey at three, Jimmy Graham at four, the elusive Kyle Rudolph at five, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, We had Greg Olson at six. We had ourselves Evan Ingram at seven, pending concussion protocol. We got to look into that. Um, We had Trey Burton at eight, Delaney Walker at nine, and we have your very own David Njoku at 10. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please like, share, subscribe if you like this video. And... I'll see you guys next time. Later.